Hey everybody, welcome back to the Resident Evil 1 commentary, and if you couldn't tell by now, the doors are meant to mass load times. <laughs> Just general trivia for a day, because I know there's probably a lot of you who never played the original game or didn't understand the idea of how low times were masqueraded cleverly or uncleverly <laughs> back in the uh, days where they needed to be. In the the remake in Resident Evil Zero, actually, originally they didn't have those. They just loaded instantaneously from room to room. Yeah, but which fo- freaked people out. Yeah, focus tests <laughs> really missed the doors, you know? Yeah. They uh, so they inserted them back in as a stylistic choice. Also, there. have you ever played the uh, have you ever played the Nintendo DS version? Uh, Resident Evil One. Dead no, I didn't, I, I, think it was. I didn't. I didn't even realize there was one. <sighs> yeah. It's Is a, it any it's, good? Yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah. It's pretty much a straight port of the PS1. It's pretty game. much a straight port. The only memorable thing that I remember about it is that they use the touch screen to do some. Uh, funny things with Jill, like you can tap her and she'll react to where you tap her. I don't. A couple of games do that. Uh, Sonic Rush, I know, does that. If you tap the screen, you'll be like, "Hey, what the fuck?" Uh, stop that! I'm calling the cops. Yeah. <laughs> I'm if stars. someone tries to touch you in a way or in a place that makes you uncomfortable, <laughs> that's no good. Well, they're probably playing on a DS. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I don't know. It just feels out of place to me. Yeah, that's more of a cheeky sort of thing you'd have in a more family-friendly kind of game, which is not... Well, I wouldn't exactly call it family-friendly in this context. I mean, you tap her chest, she covers her chest, and you feel like a per- pervert or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> I... <laughs> because you are. <laughs> but you are. Did they do Anyway, so... this dog bit me twice, so fuck him. Did they do anything special with the doors in the DS version, or... Uh, you can skip them entirely. Oh, okay. Uh, or you can leave them intact. Uh, for pretty much the same reasons as Remake and Zero. So, yeah. also, li- also like Luigi's Mansion. Uh, is that the, is that the case in 3DS? For the... Luigi's Mansion? Dark Moon? Well, I don't yeah. know if you can skip yeah. the cutscenes in Dark yeah, Moon. You, yeah, you can. Okay. Well, well, oh, like okay. The, well, well, like the door stuff you can, anyway. And I know you can, in original Luigi's Mansion, you can just hit the A button and it skips the door thing entirely. Oh yeah, I did that all the time, because Luigi takes like an hour to open that door. <laughs> I always did like the door opening animations, though, in the original. You know, at first glance, when you come to this game out of the remake, it looks incredibly hokey and brightly lit. Now that I'm adjusting to it, though, it's quite nice looking. It's, it's kind of nice, nice, nice tone, nice feel. Oh, because your eyes have degraded <laughs> over the last three parts, and so now it's back to PS1, Lewis. I don't, honestly, uh, maybe this is just my nostalgia. I think a lot of, oh, what generation is PS1 and 64? Fifth. Fifth. I think a lot of fifth generation games have aged a bit better than we maybe give them credit for. I mean, granted, a lot of them do look like ass. Like, I don't think. I'm the, I'm the opposite. I, I disagree. I think most games have aged really poorly, no matter no. what. No matter how much nostalgia goggles you're wearing. Like, okay, I will agree that some that are just no... There's just no uh, saving. Like, I think original Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64 especially just look like absolute garbage. But I still think, you know, if you can accept that, yes, this is an N64 PS1 game, I still think games like Spyro, Banjo-Kazooie, um, a couple of others, mm. I think still have a decent aesthetic. And they're... The cartoonish there, games there's, 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 a, better. there's a difference between aesthetic and still looking good. Well, I mean, by... I, I Well... It's not that they're supposed to be, like, I'm not expecting them to look like PS4 games, but it's not unpleasing for me to look at some of those games, where at some games like the N64 Zelda's actually a lot, a lot of fifth generation games, to be honest. Okay, well, the difference between, aesthetic is how it looks. Yeah. How, what you think of it is, is is just opinion, basically. uh, To to me, it, it, it has to do a really good job from this generation to still look even remotely decent. Like, even the examples you gave for Banjo, Spyro, no, they still look pretty garbage to me by today's standards. I think they age better, though, than Tomb Raider. Well, or, y- well yeah, that's, you know? that's that's a mixture of just being better built and Tomb, Tomb, Ra- Tomb, Raiders, the, two and, the style. Tomb Raiders 2 and 3, I will give credit for uh, having aged okay for what they are. Tomb Raider One is the one with the triangular boobs and stuff. Yeah, that's that's like really like I, like I would say out. Resident Evil Two looks better than any of the Tomb Raider games. I keep thinking that thing on the floor is something I can pick up. That's why I'm keeping checking yeah. this damn wall. But uh, I remember uh, speaking of Tomb Raider on the old PlayStation Underground discs, there was a pretty cool feature about the making of the later Tomb Raider games, um, and how, like how they 
achieved more detailed models and all of that and how they design the levels it was, it was cool I, I need to see if i still have that disc so that i can everything is made of triangles what do you guys think of the concept of the ink ribbon like and how you oh if little, they, they, there's a, a lot, limited a amount, amount of saves in this game right i hate it yeah <laughs> okay okay i in, actually i i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna defend it and i really wish that resident evil 7 had this option other than as part of madhouse difficulty because when you when you limit it to madhouse difficulty suddenly it's like oh you've got limited saves and the game is kicking your ass every 20 seconds it's like no okay i would rather have that be an either or proposition <laughs> um but in any case uh, making saving itself a tactical decision is part of what makes a game like Resident Evil nerve-wracking. And I'm not saying that you can't have a good horror game without that element, because you totally can. Silent Hill has no limited saves. It is also incredibly linear in terms of its progression. It's still a great horror game. But in this case, in Resident Evil's case... The limited saves play into the design of the game really well. I just... Here's the thing for me, especially considering that this is a game on the PS1. What if I have to go to dinner and I'm not going to be back for another four hours? I don't want to leave the game running eh. the whole time, is the thing. You know, I might be spoiled in that I grew up with Pokemon where you can save literally anywhere, but... That's, that's, not, that's not a question of whether or not there should be limited saves. That's a question of... Is the game designed to account for that situation? The answer is yes. You will never, you will pretty much never be in a situation where you can't save unless you went crazy with your ink ribbons. Well, no. Here's the the that's the the thing though. I shouldn't ha even have to worry. I shouldn't even have to worry about that. Like if something comes up and I need to leave like now, I shouldn't have to worry about there what if I need this later. There isn't a shouldn't or should, but in the game's design you will pretty much always find a typewriter next to an item box, and you will pretty much always find two or three ink ribbons next to a typewriter when you find a new one. Not in this game. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, more RE, that's more RE2, not in this well, game. Well, it, it's, it's, it's more pronounced in RE2. Uh, in Resident Evil 2 throws ink ribbons at you so readily that it's like, why are we even still using limited Well, I'm talking specifically <laughs> ink ribbons near typewriters. No, the, the ink not, ribbons not are usually... Right, there's usually like... And ink ribbon, like right next to the new typewriters. I think there are a few exceptions, but there's a lot of exceptions. <laughs> the the other thing though is that there aren't that many typewriters. Um, there aren't nearly as many typewriters as there were in Resi Two. Um, in the mansion, you're pretty much going back and forth between the two same the same two typewriters um, for most of the game. So. Uh, uh. I just don't want to have to worry about losing two hours of progress because I needed to go pick up my brother from soccer practice and the power went out or, any, or something don't like that. I really you know? think there's any situation in which you would lose two hours of practice from not uh, – two hours of progress from not saving. Yeah, because so you, you want to hang on to your no, no, uh, no, no. What I'm saying is this is – no, this is not – this is not um, a long game. That is the, that's the other thing about the limited saves. It's, it's not a long game. Even if you had to start over from the beginning, that's not that's not a major project here. It's, uh, it's more here, of... it's it's not a long game. Now is the thing. Like, no, it wasn't a long game even back then. This is uh, this is not a game that. Uh, I, whenever you ma wh whatever you made a what game happened? that was as non-linear as this. With the limited data that an old CD would would allot you, what that basically meant was you were spreading out your data use. You were spreading out the game. So it's 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 it's, it's, it's not a very long game, but it certainly is wide. You yeah, know what I mean? If you're if you're but here's the thing: if you're a nine-year-old, I know that nine-year-olds shouldn't be playing Resident Evil, but they do. So if you're a nine-year-old playing this for the first time, you probably will get stuck and wander around aimlessly for a while because i i know that because i did that back in the day like my first paper mario playthrough i maxed out the in-game timer on that even though that game's like a 20-hour game generously for anybody who knows what they're doing but you can't assume that everybody does know what they're doing because games it's, it's, especially the back thing. then were okay, considered here's for kids. the thing <laughs> here's the thing though all right the 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 very nature of resident evil's design is that all of the challenge is in finding your way and 
uh, being efficient about what you do. Now, one of the things in Resident Evil 7 that kind of spoiled its return to um, classic Resident Evil style is the fact that you could go in, and I did this frequently in my first playthrough, you could go into an area that was full of enemies, right? You know it's full of enemies because you've been down there that three times. You've been save scumming. And you can continue to save scum until you get through that area with as minimal uh, ammo usage as you want, if you so, if you so choose. And there's there's nothing to stop you from doing this either. Go down into that area, kill one enemy, go back up to your save point and save, and then return. And the area is small enough that this isn't a, a, a particularly tedious process either. You can just jog back and save. Honestly, I don't think that there's a problem with that necessarily. There though. is. There listen, is. Listen, if you're not uh, listen, if you're not into the atmosphere or the sense of dread that RE1 tries to establish, then the limited increments is not so much part of the game design; it's an inconvenience to you. That's the way it's, I, it's I all, view it. It's all, it's all one, it's all one design. Everything plays into the other aspects at play here. I'm not saying. Yeah, that yeah, but I, but I'm not. I, I wasn't asking how the ink ribbons are incorporated into the game. I'm asking what you, I'm asking what you think about it. If 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 you're not into that other stuff, though, if you're not into that other stuff, it doesn't really matter whether or not you whether or not the, the, the ink ribbons appeal to you, because at that point, why are you playing the game in the first place? Because you only it, get one game every six months for Christmas, because that's what happened to me. <laughs> you know, I only got, get, like, two if, games if, if, every if, uh, six months, so I'm playing the one I've got. <laughs> I, know I'm beating, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but if you're at that point in your life, you really should not be playing Resident Evil. I know, <laughs> I, said that, I said that earlier, but parents make bad decisions all the time. <laughs> you can enjoy a lot of things about a game and still not like this one thing about it. Well, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's like if 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 you don't like that aspect, fine. Uh, I, I'm I'm defending it more from a design from a design standpoint. Oh yeah, I, yeah, and and I and I understand that clearly, but it's it's more of I, what do you think about it personally? Like, do you think it works the way they intended? Do you do you think, I think their intention it does. was? I, okay. I, I, really I would okay. It. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to being a pedantic asshole mode here. I would say it doesn't because I don't think that Resident Evil One succeeds at being scary in the first place. It's, so. okay. it's, it's, um, it's hard to it's hard to explain this, but it's less about how scary the individual situations and atmospheres are, and more about the overall feeling of tension that you get while playing the game. And that's hard to and that's hard to convey through video footage because. The tension comes from your personal decision-making process while playing through the game. What ammo do I use and where do I use it? Uh, what direction am I supposed to go? I've got five doors that I can open with this key, and there's probably zombies on the way to each of them. Where am I going to go first? And is that place going to be the place that I need to go first? <laughs> is this yeah, if anything, atmosphere is like the last... Am I if anything, time? like... The way the game looks, or atmosphere, is like one of the last things that'll probably scare you, or you know, getting vomited by the the frat boy zombie there. Um, but I, I think, I mean, it, it goes without saying, and we're probably can, we can't stress this enough. If you want all that plus spooky aesthetic, you play remake. Yeah, and it, because re remake is remake is damn near perfect. It, remake is it, remake is the pinnacle of this particular survival hard uh, design style. In fact, it's 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 done so well that half my argument for the Resident Evil 2 remake being in third person and in more of a Resident Evil 7 style is they already got it so right in remake one. I don't really think they're going to outdo that, you know. <laughs> So we might as well go in a direction where there's potential for improvement to be seen, um, you know, because, uh, you know, we haven't seen much in the way of a truly scary Resident Evil 4 style game, and there is still a lot of improvement. There's still a lot of room for improvement in the Resident Evil 7 formula as well. Resident Evil 7, I think, was a great step in, in the right direction. Yeah, but at the same time, enemy variety is absolute ass. Um, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> the beginning could have been a hell of a lot shorter. <laughs> that 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 long walkie, uh, nothing happens intro. What that's do you think? I, I honest time. to god, I honest <laughs> to god thought they had something going with Leon scenario in RE6. 
Well, the first two hours of Leon's they, scenario. They, they of sort of did, six. but uh, you know, and there's potential to be tapped there, which we'll probably see in the re- re- in, in remake too. But um, at the same time, they also did other things awkwardly in that. There was the forced walking section, for one thing. I don't really approve of a forced walking section. If I'm walking in a horror game, it should be because I'm deliberately being cautious and not because oh, you're the injured. game won't let me <laughs> use the run button. You know? They Is did. there a reason why you're you're walking in that, or because I know very little? Oh, about... it's uh, at the at the very beginning of, of Leon's campaign in Resident Evil Six. Basically, it starts in media in media res after you shoot the, the zombie president, and um, and you are in a college campus that has been gassed with a bioweapon. Leon and Helena are cautiously making their way out. And uh, you aren't really allowed to start running until the game decides that you need to hurry for something. You think about think of those forced walking sections in Metro to Other M. Yeah, it's basically that. Pretty much. Yeah. And Everyone's then, favorite part of the game. A lot, a lot of games have that kind of thing. This is another Jill exclusive thing. Jill knows how to play the piano, unlike Chris, who needs Rebecca to do it. Apparently... Chris is an avatar for the composer that was not actually deaf. Apparently musical instruments are a woman thing, according to Resident Evil, because only Rebecca and Jill can do this stuff. So if you're playing as Chris, you need to find Rebecca before you can access So Chris this refuses to wear fanny packs and doesn't know how to play the piano. This is another thing that makes the beginning of Jill's campaign easier. It, though is and this is true in the remake as well is that Jill can just do this the moment she gets here so as soon as you have access to this room you can get the the two shields and swap them and do what you need to do in here um, I also can't help but whenever I hear Moonlight Sonata is get reminded of a video of Spongebob at the cafe when it's raining outside it's just in black and white it's just playing it <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's just like the, it's a gif of just the rain falling outside, but it's just SpongeBob sitting there in black and white and it's just playing Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that ornate red door. And one of the things I like about the loading screens that that involve the doors is that every door, of course, has its own design, right? And, you know, you're going to see repeated doors all over the place because that's how buildings work. But whenever there's a unique door in a specific place, you'll always get that door. Uh, and, like, yeah, there are load times for certain staircases as well. Or elevators in some cases. There's a different one for every for every door, and it always matches the one that you're going through. It's not some generic screen. I, I enjoy that attention to, de- to detail. The Resident Evil 1 is chock full of little details like that that may go unnoticed by the first or even second time player. Mm-hmm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you need to examine the keys. You need to examine the keys in order to see what emblem is on them and rename them, but I think the keys will work, even if you haven't done that yet. Yeah, if you know what you're doing, I think it works. So I, I'm jump cutting back to the only use where the shield key is needed. <laughs> yeah, the shield key is uh, is a one shot wonder. Yeah. Uh, one one of the things about um about the keys is I don't think it was until Resident Evil Two that the game would prompt you to throw away the key if you... No, no, this game does it too. This yeah, game this, game, it too. Th- th- this game does it, and also... So um, Jill just knows that there's no more doors left yeah. in this mansion? Yeah, she, she's... Everyone's psychic in Resident Evil. They don't know they don't need the key anymore. I, I do want to get I do want to give credit to Star, so they are very conscientious about property damage. They don't just kick the doors down. Yeah. <laughs> okay, boss fights in Resident Evil... Suck. <laughs> <laughs> Combat is not this is not this series' strong suit. Yeah, um, I think that's a. I think that's unfortunately a part of. Well, we're making a game, and there has to be boss fights to make it feel like you're progressing. That that certainly was the mindset in the the '90s, but I don't think that's necessarily. No, I, I'm now. not. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying that was probably just the mindset of during the development of this. Game. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the, the uh, Resident Evil One, to its credit, though, does some interesting things with his boss fights. Uh, Yawn can bite you. If he does, you get poisoned. If you get poisoned, well, poison to, poison isn't a regular status effect in Resident Evil One. It, it triggers this event where, as a separate character, you have to run across the mansion to this one room with serum in it, and then get that serum back. And if you've been smart, you've cleared the passages between that save room and the other side of the mansion, so you can. Have have a really easy time with it. If you haven't been smart about killing zombies in the frequently backtracked areas, though, or are just bad at navigating the mansion, which you shouldn't be, the structure is pretty 
straightforward. Um, and then you just run a, into a wall. And then you just run into a wall Pokemon that knows toxic, and you get badly poisoned. <laughs> it can, it can be game. a really harrowing situation, but it's less harrowing if you've been smart about navigating the mansion. Is what I'm saying. It plays more into Chris's scenario than it does Jill, though, yeah. because yeah. Uh, Jill. The only thing that happens with Jill if you get bit there is she collapses, and you are immediately warped into a save room. Uh, thanks to Barry. So if anything, I guess oh, it right. saves a little. It saves a little time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, if you don't, then you you skip the cutscene entirely. You just keep going about your merry way. 